a reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, saying, Set out for the great city of Nineveh, and announce to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh, according to the Lord's bidding. Now, Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walking, announcing, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. I find this phrase to be most striking. Why isn't it when they believe the words of Jonah, or why not when they believe the proclamation of Jonah about what God was about to do to them. It's simply when they believed God. And we hear, following the immediacy in which the Ninevites repent, something unique is happening, something special. Something has happened in this encounter between Jonah and the Ninevites because they're not encountering Jonah's preaching. They're encountering God. And by that encounter, they see the misdeeds of their ways in the light of God's truth. Why is it then? Why is it that Jonah has changed so much? A rebellious prophet who did not even want to follow the will of God. And yet here he is, proclaiming what God has told him. What happened? I think in order to understand, we have to put this in the entire context of the story of Jonah, but also to go back. We know that Jonah was a prophet with many foibles. He did not want to follow the will of the Lord. But, in not following the will of the Lord, to run away, he hopped on a ship. During that time, a storm popped up. And what happens? In order to calm that storm, he gets tossed into the sea and swallowed by a fish. Now, I'm not sure what being inside a fish will be like. I'm pretty sure it'll be unpleasant. But what's striking about this is that in the ancient Near Eastern context, the sea is a symbol of chaos. I think it is here in the midst of this chaos that Jonah begins to change. And if you read chapter 2 of the book of Jonah, you'll see that in the prayer that he expresses to God, the chaos he is in, how the waves have swept over him, but yet how his life is in God. I think it's the same for us, too. Chaos is terrifying and disorderly. 
and makes us vulnerable and weak. Because in the midst of our, our own chaos, in our own lives, we are confronted with ourselves, with our very anxieties. In those times of chaos, things are reflected back at us, our weaknesses, our failings, our self-created images, perhaps the images to be the best, built upon pride or desire for power and control, or perhaps our images of worthlessness because we believe we lack some sort of intrinsic value or images that we project to others just so that we will be accepted and loved. But when this chaos in our lives sort of takes hold of us, it takes every image we have created and throws it out. The thin veneer of who we thought we were is gone. Everything in a way we believed about ourselves is no more. And for this reason, we are terrified when chaotic times come. Because then we have to ask ourselves, who are we? But also, we must realize that it is in these chaotic times, it is in the midst of the chaos that we encounter God. God's abiding presence over the waters of chaos in the midst of our lives. And we encounter who we really are. That we are really nothing without God. You made us for yourself, O Lord, Augustine tells us. In these moments, we can experience something unique. Not just any moment, but a Genesis moment in which God speaks his word into our very hearts. God speaks his, his word into our very lives. And in a sense, we are remade. Our true self emerges as an image not of our own making, but of God's making. Not one built upon pride, not one built upon the desire for power, not one built upon the desire for longing to be accepted, but an image built upon divine charity. That we have been made for God, to be in friendship with God and in communion with one another. And it's this experience in our life that enables us to go and become really the Word of God in the midst of the world. And it's not like this experience happens just once in our life. In a way, Jonah needed to return basically to a wasteland, another symbol for chaos because he didn't understand God's intentions. Why did God spare the Ninevites? But over time, each time we go through these periods of darkness, each time we go through the periods of chaos, we encounter God anew and grow ever deeper into that love, being fashioned and refashioned more into his own image and likeness. And when God speaks his word into our very lives, God makes our bodies, our lives, into fitting temples where he dwells in the tabernacle of our very heart. We are the true temples of God. Just as God dwelt in the Holy of Holies in the tabernacle and the Holy of Holies in the temple was filled with God's glory, so too with us. God touches us, and God speaks his word into our very life, 
makes of us a temple, builds us into a dwelling, and His presence pervades us. And this is where our God has chosen to abide, so that His presence may fill our entire selves, that in a way we may be consumed with His presence, and at the same time we aren't destroyed by it. This, my brothers, is our Eucharist, whom we adore. The divine word made food for us that we may be transformed to be a manifestation of that word in our lives. So that our lives, what we do and what we say, may be for someone else a cause for transformation. Isn't that really the Dominican vocation? Isn't that who we are? A life so pervaded by the divine word that the words we speak and the word of our life tells not only of God's presence, or it does tell us of God's presence, but in a way, what people see is not us. What people see is an image of the Word of God reflected in us. And I think this is what they encounter with Jonah. I think this is what the Ninevites encounter with Jonah. That somehow God has touched Jonah's life, that he has been transformed. And so who they encounter is not Jonah's words, but the word of God. And that's the vocation of a prophet, to communicate the will of God and God's presence. And it's also our Dominican vocation as well.